Good evening. Welcome to the 5-8, where we take five of the week's most fucked up topics, fucked up, fucked up topics, and discuss them for eight minutes each. Yeah. Five topics, eight minutes, two hosts. We're in the same room at the moment. In the same, in the same space. room. Uh, one guest, um, some singing, or, you know, advertising. Uh, a lot of curse words and as many cocktails as we need necessary. Okay, we need at least one. How are you, OB? I'm good. I'm a little, I'm a little, look, uh, everything I own is in boxes and suit bags, suitcases, and it has been for, I don't know, over a month now, it feels like. So this is it. This is what you're getting. You're getting the hat, which is a red hat with a studio logo on it. So it's everything that is I'm opposed to at the okay. moment. But that, we do that was my only hat that didn't end up in a box. Maybe we could do like a if we do like the new Twitter logo over your hat, it would be perfect. Oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah, it'd be yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I'm happy to be here with you. I'm happy Thanks you're here. Thanks for hosting yeah. me. Cheers. This is great in the Hudson Valley. Cheers. Yep. Cheers to the Hudson yep. Valley. Uh thank you everybody for watching. Uh yes, we are both mm -hmm. in the same room. Now, this is like really good CGI. Everyone's on strike. We got really good CGI. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is LAI. This AI. <laughs> the aliens came right at the same time we passed singulation, singularity. So singularity. Singulation. 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 I don't know. Just, <laughs> I promise we haven't been drinking before these uh, no, Manhattans. No, we. Ooh, but that it, is very delicious. You it, are correct. I, yeah. Yeah, you do make a nice Manhattan. I do. Yeah. Thank you for saying so. Yeah. But um, Ooh, yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's a little strong. It's it's a little strong. Oh, that's okay. We need to have another sip. That's okay. We can do a little strong, but we, you know, it was, um, yeah, I, we've been together all afternoon and yet most of it was spent driving. So, um, mm -hmm. we were sort of scrambling around to get ready for the show, but we made it, we made it right we on time. It. I think we we're like five seconds late. So, yeah, you know, um, I got a happens. ring light in here, but it's so far away. It's not going to make a difference. So, and I don't have my glasses on, so I hope everything looks fine. I think it does. I I don't um, know. yeah. No, we can see the con. We have a nice big monitor that we're using here. Okay. And uh, we don't need headphones because we're together. And yeah. I think that we'll see when our guest comes on uh, whether or not it echoes. But yeah. hopefully, hopefully it will not. You guys will let us know if, mm -hmm. if it doesn't work. Okay. Um, hopefully it will not. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Now, so let's say again off the top and then we'll announce it again. This is our our final show of what, what I season? I think it's season three. I'm pretty sure. This is this season three? 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 Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I thought it was two and Chunk was like, no, it's three. Mm -hmm. Next season is four. So mm -hmm. I don't know. All right. Yeah. Well, so that's what's it. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks, but yeah. we're taking a break. But we do want all of you to come. We're going to have an after hours. We are going to have an after hours. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so anybody who joins tonight. Okay. And again, our membership is what a dollar ninety nine. Is yeah. it still a dollar ninety nine? It's one ninety nine. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's the lowest, the lowest here. That's the lowest here. And uh, yeah, it, we're gonna try to do like an AMA thing. You know. Yeah. That's what we're gonna try to do. An yeah. AMA thing on the after hours. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. So if you join Closing out our season, or if you've already joined, you can ask us a question and we will try to answer it. And that's that'll be the format of the uh, of the. Um, the after hours, which will be on immediately, or not immediately, some minutes after this show. Some however, minutes after however long the show this one goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually, I write like a joke for the top of this, and I did not. That's the one thing I didn't do. That's you have any the one jokes? thing. That's a, no, we have no jokes. I told my story that we have to wait for a very. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got. I got no. We jokes. We got no jokes. I've got no jokes. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's a paucity of jokes. Yeah. This is the 58th episode of the Five Eight. Um, yeah. which seems significant. I don't know. We're, we're going to delve into numerology later. Yeah. Um, ours is the non-Nazi kind, you know, the anti-Nazi kind. So, um, hey, did you get, did you do Wordle today? I did. What was it again? I thought about that. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the Wordle oh, for people that didn't do the Wordle. All right, plug yours if but you didn't do the Wordle. I'm just going to say the line that the word is from uh, the scene in Lebowski, in the big Lebowski. Uh, where they're talking about nihilism and and he says uh say what you will about national socialism at least it was an ethos so i felt like that was a it was a lebowski morning for me so i did not remember that line mm. when i did the world yeah. and, my you know, wife I did got, not either i have to i have to say i never remember the word as soon as i saw the word i think that's i think that's part of the yeah that's part of the thing here yeah uh, so i'm yeah, pleased okay. that my uh 
My brain's all blown apart. Well, let's dive in. I think we should dive into the show. Should we dive we in? We do okay. have an after hours. So we have a great guest coming. We do. Um, and of yeah. course, we're going to cover, I think, the big news items, or at least they were big for us. I don't know. This was a weird week. Like we, It was weird. You know, we have this video ready to go for the third indictment, right? And then the superseding indictment comes out. We're mm. like, is that the third indictment or is that like an enhanced second indictment? I've lost track of how to even count all the fucking indictments. So I, you know, I don't know. Did he did, did we screw up? I'm not not really sure. You know, I'm not really sure how to process all that. But I think we um, have to wait for new new kinds of a new so. kind of I think so. I think crime. superseding superseding indictment is wonderful. Like it's lovely, you know, yeah. but not for, not for the purposes of counting indictments. Like we're counting. Yeah. You know, on, yeah. So. We need, we need more, just not more crimes, but a, a different, a, a, a different flavor. A mm -hmm. January 6th flavor would yeah, be lovely. Would be I'm nice. not sure we're going to get that. Everybody thought that's what we were going to get, but Jack Smith could have been talking to Trump's mm -hmm. attorneys about the superseding. Um, peach, I, peach flavor would be good a too. Peach flavored indictment would be just it was delicious a little cobbler mm, a little yeah. bit of cobbler because there's a lot of ingredients in that one yeah a lot of players a lot of players. like elector sprinkles yeah meanwhile somebody I think yeah marcy wheeler pointed out like super michigan, vanilla michigan they just keep indicting people that, that yeah we might, get there. Yeah, we might get there with good. michigan i, I feel know. like michigan is like the anti-texas by the way have we talked about this before no yeah because texas you have like three like dudes who are fascists and, and that's who runs the state in michigan you have three women who are very much not and they run the state and it's like they run the state and also if you look at the map it's almost like you know it's a mirror Oh, it's an inverted. Mm, sort of, not really exactly. Not really, yeah, it's but it's close. Smaller. It's close. Michigan is smaller than Texas. I'm pretty sure. I think it's been in the union a lot longer. That could also be. I don't yeah, know. I'm not sure, but we're not historians, and even though we pretend to be one, we're on not YouTube. a lot of things. We're not a lot of things. <laughs> All right, let's dive in. All, All right, right, diving in. Oh wait, oh, what? I don't have a timer. I'm so discombobulated. Where's your phone? Where's your phone? Hang on, let me get my phone. Hang on, I hear hang it on. blinging. It is what's bing. Yeah, somebody's. You know, when I hear that hotline bling, it means that the eight minute segment is over. That's what it means. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me, get, let me get to my thing. <laughs> All right. You get to your thing. Um, so we had four we had four topics that we were talking about. What are we gonna do? There's four topics, and then I went and, and picked you up uh, yes. in a different town about 40 minutes from here. And yep. uh checked the old Twitter. And what do you know? Uh Alito gave us a topic to the end so to start off the show with what do you know so okay we ready we rolling uh, it's it's going we're rolling with topic number one yeah. okay which is don't cry for me sam alito uh, again he's written a, an article or an op-ed rather for the wall street journal um this time arguing that actually uh, you know by the constitution uh the, there's no way for anybody to uh enforce ethics rules on supreme court justices we could just do whatever the fuck we want it's actually written in the kind. I think he. I didn't read the whole thing, but I'm pretty sure he wrote it just like that. We can do whatever the <laughs> fuck we want. I think pretty sure that's how it it was spelled out in the uh, in the piece. A couple of things. First of all, um, I I know my my mom doesn't like it when I swear, but I can't not just say fuck you, Sam Alito, every time that we mention yeah, his I name. Yeah, I like that one. He's a horrible human. He's responsible for a lot of like suffering in this country now. Um, and you know, that's just how it goes. So I, I don't think we, we can, uh, leave him off the hook. Like every time we bring him up as much as we'd like to make fun of him, we have to remember women are dying and suffering because of this man and he thinks he's wonderful and he's not. So that's the first point about Alito. The other thing is that, you know, Sam Alito is in this little, uh, Leonard Leo, Alito and Leo. It's like I simulation. Know. Right? I know. It yeah. Is. They're in this same network. They're in what I call the radical Catholic network. It's all people that are associated or affiliated with the Catholic Information Center in DC. So not all Catholics, not even all of his day people, just people that are in this circle of and practice um, this radical Catholicism that is not representative of mainstream Catholicism or for that matter, pretty much what the Pope is pushing these days because they don't like the Pope and they the Pope doesn't like the particularly Pope. like them. Yeah. Uh, so another guy who's in this network, who's like buds with Leonard Leo is James Taranto, um, who I'd never heard of when I was researching my Leo uh, um, man in the middle piece. Uh, he's there's so many, you know, he's done such a fabulous job of uh, networking that uh, he knows a lot of people. But this guy, Taranto, uh, edited a book with Leonard Leo about 20 years ago. That was a book that ranked the presidents. 
which I have not read. I almost want to buy it and read it just to see like what the what their really? rankings are. Yeah. Like, is Andrew Jackson high number on the list because he's like the most think, dictatorial? Yeah. You yeah. know, is Kennedy number one because he's the only Catholic? I don't know. I don't know what their rankings were. Um, it's all kind of silly, but uh, Taranto is now um, in charge of the editorial section of the Wall Street Journal. Oh, what do you know? You know? The Wall Street Journal, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch, and this guy is in charge of not the journalism side, not the investigative journalism side, but the editorial side, the op-ed page. He decides what goes into the op-ed page. He makes it his own. So this is like me calling up, like, I don't know, Chunk and being like, hey, can I write a little piece on your newspaper? And Chunk being like, great, Greg, sure. But we have to make sure that we point this out because the fact that the Wall Street Journal is the Wall Street Journal mm. gives it that patina of respectability and um, stuff like that that it doesn't really quite deserve in this context. Because again, most people who don't follow the media every day don't understand that an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal is very different from uh, just a hard journalism story in the Wall Street Journal. It's different sections, it's different editors, it's different things completely. And the Wall Street, him writing in the Wall Street Journal one of the purposes of doing that is to make it seem like this is a respectable mainstream view. It's not a respectable mainstream view. It's a fascist view and it's a radical view. And again, this guy is, um, you know, he's a bad dude and he's not very smart and he does not want people investigating him. He doesn't want people to know what he's doing, which begs the question, what are you doing, Sam Alito? What is he doing? What are you doing? What's so terrible that we already know about your what fucking fishing trip? We saw the big fish you caught. You're so great. You did such a good job, Sam. So what are you hiding? I mean, was I right about Starry Decisis being the drag name? Like, what's going on? What's so awful that you can't have Congress investigate you? And you know who Congress can't investigate? Nobody. That's not how this shit works. Um you're an originalist, Sam Alito, so you know why the Founding Fathers rebelled, right? It was about tyranny and not wanting to answer to the fucking king. They don't want kings. We don't want kings in this country either. You're not a king. You're subject to disclosure and investigation like everybody else. No matter what your buddy at the Wall Street Journal lets you write about, you know? It's just ridiculous of a joke. That's what I got. I'm so with you. Um, so... I think the thing, though, and I know we we hear this pointed out, we pointed out, we hear mm -hmm. it pointed out of like, you know, trying to distinguish the investigative journalism yeah. from the op-ed. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. If the Wall Street Journal's brand is on the top of it, it's like the New York Times. It's like yeah. the Washington Post. These are it's like it, the people do think, well, it wouldn't be in there if right, exactly. it didn't have this brand over it. Yeah. So whether it's an opinion or whether it's deep uh, investigative journalism, only the people who like us who are wonky about journalism mm -hmm. care about that distinction and yeah. keep making it. The publications themselves don't give up are putting their brand on it. Yeah. So uh, it, it's and that's what the majority of of readers readership are just people hearing about it let's say because what happens is they'll it'll get picked up into other media as right. the wall street journal piece right right exactly we're doing right it. we're talking about we're this. talking about it yeah. as a wall street journal and we're talking about it in that way so that we can not only make the distinction mm -hmm. but also point out the connection between these individuals who are all buddies and are there for each other the other side of this when you told me about this i was like well you know it's not a minus anymore it's not a thing. There's no, it's not that they're shameless people. It's that this particular thing, they don't have shame around just the obviousness of the organization yeah. and collaboration around these, not, not just opinions, but SCOTUS opinions that end yeah. up being um, uh, law. Right, yeah. that affects us all in a very profound rulings way. Rulings yeah. on law, rulings mm -hmm. on law. Right, that a, a SCOTUS decision. So uh, it's a plus for them. What's a minus for us? And I and I don't. I'm not trying to do an us and them, but it is an us and they've done the us and them. Yeah. They so have. here we are. We're over here. We were driving. This came on, I believe. This news item dropped, and you were kind of seeing it right as we were driving by this one house that you were saying to me, you got to see this house. It's like, mm. he's got all these crazy signs up and it's all anti-Biden and, yeah, and pro-Trump. Yeah, people that make and, their 
they're like peacocks. They have to like have their, oh, their they feathers gotta out. they got to have their signs they're up. They're FJB, yeah. you know. Feathers. Oh my god! And and it was like you want you took a picture. I'm like I don't want to. I'm not taking a picture. I I don't want to talk about this. The, you know these these folks. But here I am talking about <laughs> I it. I forgot about it. You're talking yeah, about yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But that this came in. There's like there's a pride of ownership mm -hmm. around their obvious corruption, around their their sticking together to stick it to uh, the the them, yeah. which is us, mm -hmm. right? And it's like well, you're not. You're yeah. sticking it to us by stripping us of our rights and then jumping around and parading about that. Yeah, it's um, gross. It's horrible. Yeah. I, again, there's they have pride of ownership. Alito has pride of ownership. This guy, what's his name again? Let's keep saying his name. Taranto. James Taranto. 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 Like Toronto, right? but with an A. Oh, Taranto. Like Tarantula. Like Taranto. Yeah. 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 Uh, tarantula. Yeah. Mr. Tarantula. Pride of ownership. Mm -hmm. That he's got a SCOTUS that is his buddy, and yeah. of course, I'll let nice? you write it. You could, yeah, he, could, he could write for anybody, but he's writing for us because of my relationship yeah. with him. You know, it's a bragging point. All right, gotta move on. Uh, well, okay, so we don't have kings, we don't have kings, but well, we, we certainly do have, have bloodlines. We do have bloodlines, don't we, we have nepotism, we don't have nepotism we? bloodlines. We, we sure have, do. We have uh, Camelot, though, don't we? We have Camelot, um, and mm -hmm. and many others, uh, so. But I can't tell your joke. You're going to have to tell that joke. I'm not telling the joke. After hours. I'll tell it on the after hours. Okay, perfect. Listen, okay. you got to come to after hours. It's a great joke. <laughs> it's, worth, it's worth the price of admission. It's worth the price of admission. Um, yeah, Nazi numerology. So uh, folks that have been following me for a long time, I think I started this, oh my God, it was had to have been 2017, right? But yeah. not with the numerology. So there are numbers that are really, really important to uh, what everything from, well, well, anyone on the right, I would, I'll call it that, that subscribes in any way to Nazism, mm -hmm. whether they just tickle around and play with it because they think it'll get them an audience, you know, um, whether they're fighting Likud, <laughs> I don't know, whatever their crazy <laughs> reason is for um, embracing Nazism, right? right? Because you have to do that for the Russians to trust and believe that you're really one of them or or they subscribe to uh, to American uh, Nazism, right? Yeah. And this is not, I, I'm not just bringing that word out and applying it on something because of some kind of, you know, I'm lumping politics together in some way. This is, these are the, there is a numerology to Nazism. so to American Nazism that have been created. So there's something called the 14 words um, that white supremacists and white nationalists that also subscribe to Adolf Hitler embrace. Um, and it's about not wanting to, I don't want to repeat the words, but there's 14 words that came out of a guy that was in prison and he was a big neo-Nazi and da, 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 da. And so he came up with this phrase about you know, basically inspiring white people to keep breeding so that the brown people's babies, you know, don't replace the white babies. This is this was a phrase uh, that he came up with that is 14 words long. So it became known as the 14 words. And during the Trump administration, starting with Stephen Miller, then we had it coming out of the Department of Homeland Security, things under Kirsten Nielsen. She was under testimony. Um, in front of the, I think it was a house, could have been the Senate, yeah. where uh, she put under oath to say, did you know what this was? It was a very blatant thing. And because uh, they were repeating the 14 words in various ways. Um, and some of it just blatantly repeating the 14 words coming out of actual uh, uh, offices within, <laughs> under the Homeland Security when the, all of, we had the whole my, Jeff Sessions migrant policy of separating children uh, from their parents, right? When all of that started, this big, this big sort of thing happened. There were statements going out. There were numbers going out and 14 and what it usually companies with, which I'm gonna get to a second, were part of all of that. I was pointing this out to people. Um, mm -hmm. And th so this was years ago and, and other, uh, and I was learning a lot about it from my journalist friends that cover Nazism, American yeah. Nazism, and the extreme right that, you know, and from the SPLC to Luke O'Brien, all these folks. 
And they're like, no, no, this is a big deal. This 14 words is a big deal. The number 14 is a, a, a symbol for American Nazism. They use that number a lot because they're uh, tipping their hat to this whole idea that we have to keep breeding white babies because the brown babies are going to outnumber us. This mm -hmm. is it. They're going to not replace us. This whole, you will not replace us. It's a re the re great replacement theory boiled down to 14 words. Okay. So that's the number 14. It's very, very important. It goes with another number almost all of the time. And the other number it goes with is 88. Mm -hmm. 88 is a, an enormous symbol to the American Nazi movement. It stands for, eight stands for, in, to them, the letter of the alphabet that is H. So 8-8 eight, eight is Heil Hitler. When it became that you couldn't just carry around a swastika, although now they're out with their swastikas. Yeah. Yeah, Trump made it okay, out with his swastika. Remember David Duke going, he's with us, he's with us on Twitter, mm -hmm. because Trump was tweeting out the number 88, 88 this, 88 generals are signing my thing, 88 this over here, 88, 88, 88, 88. I had a nice conversation with Frank Kogluzzi at one point about this. He went on air and said, look, this is like Trump administration is putting out this idiot. That's a signal. You need to be better with your statescraft when you're president of the United States, because that is a, a, a not it's not even a dog whistle. It's just a it's a Nazi bullhorn to the Nazis. If you use that number, you need to be educated. You need to be aware of what these numbers are. You can't just be spouting the number alone 88 let alone the number 1488 mm -hmm. which the associated press was it completely blew my mind back when it was about how many migrants do we think we've lost how many children have we lost track of when we're separating back in the days of the separation policy and the ap the associated press published a number that they were given where from oh department of homeland security mm. right and who was playing around in there stephen miller and kirsten nielsen and with the J, Kirsten with the J, and out comes this number of how many migrants? 1488, right? I grabbed that, I posted it on Twitter. I'm like, holy fucking shit, is anybody seeing this? So everyone who covers the American Nazi movement and Nazism, especially throughout Europe, all of this, they all know these numbers. They know what the symbol is, they, the symbolism is. They know how important it is that everybody is aware of wh what these numbers mean. And when we have elected officials throwing these numbers around, what they're actually cal either careless and clueless they are or who they're throwing the signal to. And when we try to promote this, and if it's coming out of the faces of people, the characters that became characters around all this, like the Richard Spencers of the world, if it, or Chris Cantwell's, all these people who are like, oh, okay, well, yeah, oh, yeah, they're Nazis. But when it was coming out of the White House, if you pointed it out, right, it was coming out of Junior, Don Trump Jr., who was always posting the number 88, 88, 88, 88, 88. When we would point that out from the journalists to me, to the you know amateurs covering this, but professional writers, we were called Blue and On. Mm -hmm. but it's like, oh, you sound like QAnon, but for the left. Oh, it's conspiracy theory. It's like, no, I'm trying to get you to understand that this number, 1488, it, you might as well fly a swastika from the White House. If a campaign uses this number, you have to understand they know what they're fucking doing and they know who they're talking to. They're inciting. They're trying to, they're courting. They're speaking out to the Nazis, to the literal Nazis, not people we want to call their Nazis because we don't like their politics or don't agree with them. No, literal Nazis. That's the number, 1488. Well, Greg, what happened today? Um, it seems that uh, a certain Democratic uh, presidential candidate who's primary yeah, primary trying, trying, to primary Joe, Joe Biden, to, pro, trying to use these numbers in very close proximity in one of his extended tweet uh, yeah. statements. RFK Jr. tweets out the number 1488. He attaches it to the legacy of assassination of his uncle and his father to him, saying he needs secret service protection and he's been waiting 14 days and usually there's an 88 something turned around. He put those numbers up. First of all, there is no 14 day limit. There is no, he's, that none of that exists. None of that is real. You can put any number. Why not say three? Why not? How about instead of 88, why don't just call it, you know, an hour and a half or if it was days. 420. 420. Yeah. Go for that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, it's not real. Any of this stuff that he was, so you guys understand 
there was no reality to what he was saying with using those numbers as a what usually there's a delay usually they get back to me in time but they're not going to provide me with secret service detail all of this he was saying within the eight, when i had a family assassinated 14 and 88 were the numbers that he used and associated with this kind of thing right next to each other okay yeah, that's um, this isn't blue and on. This isn't this is this man. If he doesn't know better than that, if he's letting Steve Bannon, who supports his campaign and lifted him up so that he could run, if he's letting him write his tweets or Stephen Miller write his tweets or any of Bannon's crew write his tweets, then this is what we're dealing with. He either doesn't care and wants the Nazis or he's wholly incompetent. Could it be both? And it can be both. Okay. Because that's what nepotism does. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, hey, if you grew up um, under the apartheid system in South Africa and your father owned an emerald mine, do you think you would be like down with the whole replacement? Yeah, thing? yeah. More prone to yeah. just just asking questions. Just asking questions. We're just asking questions um, here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, we do we have a sponsor? I think we have a sponsor. Maybe. I don't know. And now a word from our sponsor. Uh, it, it can happen to anyone. Oh, we see something on social media, a meme or a TikTok, and it confirms a false narrative that we believe, like that the 2020 election was stolen or that Elon Musk is a genius. I know it can happen because it happened to me. Hi, I'm Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I only recently discovered that all that anti-vax stuff was Russian propaganda designed to make us sicker, weaker, and more divided. It was an op, and I fell for it. Twice. I knew I had a problem, so I went to a meeting of UIA, Useful Idiots Anonymous, and it changed my life. How can you tell if you're a useful idiot? Maybe you're fluffing Victor Orban or Roger Waters. Maybe you're hosting Twitter spaces with Nazis. Maybe you recently defected to Russia because your butt hurt that everyone called bullshit on your accusation. Maybe you're trying to primary Biden. If you think you might be a useful idiot, call 1-800-G-R-U-F-O-O-L or check out our page on Truth Social. Useful Idiots Anonymous, because the first step in solving a problem is admitting you have one. I'm Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and I'm a useful idiot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we switched chairs. Now we can be side by side. Okay. I'm fit tall. So I am not you're, tall. You're in the tall chair now. I'm in the, I'm in the comfortable chair. Yeah, this does look better. <laughs> okay. This does look better. Great. What smile? We're supposed to smile now. Okay. Okay. All uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting cues. All right. Um, it's time for our guests. And okay, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of news this week. That, yeah. That we don't we don't understand the minutiae of the news no. as much as we would like. No. So uh, the person who does is uh, she has, I think I've lost count. I think she has, <laughs> I was going to say 1,488 podcasts. No, no, just kidding. Don't even. Oh, I'm just joking. Just joking. Bad joke. Yeah. She has like 300,000 podcasts now. Yes. They're all great. They're all, They're great. all amazing. <laughs> She's the host of Muller She Wrote, Jack, Daily Beans, and she runs MSW Media. Allison Gill. Welcome Allison back. Allison Gill. How are you? Stephanie, I haven't seen you in so long. Greg, it's so wonderful to see you. I know. It's been a long time. I miss my, my fellow uh, Likud party, Mossad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Likud! Yeah. So I, I wanted to just mention, you know, you talked about 1488. We knew all that back in high school. Um, when I was part of SHARP, the Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice, we would hang out at punk shows and beat up the Nazis. And... Uh, it was it was 14 it was 88 you can't use 420 by the way because that's also hitler's birthday and they would do that a lot oh. and then um and now we've got the cpac stage shaped like the odal yep. rune which i called out we've yep. got the sonarod with desantis and his campaign um videos so it's not they're not even trying to hide it. It's no. obvious and gross. And I, I and again, people will call me uh, Blue Anon, uh, Blue MAGA, Neolib, 
to have brain worms. I mean, like the the f phrases are common um, from the trolls, the, the you know the hit pieces from the foreign. So it's out there, it's real, and uh, I encourage everybody to to study up on some of that symbology because it's being utilized. Yeah, I, I don't think it's um, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> they know what they're doing, and if it's to play there seems to also be i think with rfk jr a very particular playbook of i'm going to do something flagrantly wrong and mm -hmm. get the outrage and then say oh how could you think that and poo poo and look down and oh, not me no let me like it's also disingenuous mm -hmm. um, and it's just bait and baiting uh but baiting the folks that he says he's in the party and running for into a degrading uh, position with him. And so I, I'm not, I don't, it, it's get, you know, you can't walk like a talk, like an op squawk, like an op, you know, <laughs> you're an op, I <laughs> like a, be paid for by, you know, next we're going to find out. And maybe we did is Harlan Crow giving money to him. What, what's happening here? I don't know. He, Somebody he, is. Is yeah. this part of the radical Catholic thing as well, RFK? I don't know. It's Could be. Out. I yeah. can't believe how many people, though, are kind of thinking he's okay and saying, you know, he's really, he's amazing. He's really saying this stuff. He's, he's the Jill Stein. He's the right wing spoiler. He's, yeah. 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 He's not as good as Jill Stein. He's not as, as uh, to me, it's such an obvious, uh, who wants to listen to that guy talk for four years? Like, what she do you think? Least didn't, yeah, she at least didn't talk very much. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and uh, I, I don't know, the whole thing is very, very strange. I just don't understand it. Like, I when, when he came out, I thought, well, this is going to, this is just going to careen into the, into the gutter on the side of the road really fast. This is like that meme that I saw of the guy that t gets out of the car while it's driving and it immediately smashes into the, into the uh, telephone pole. Well, just like oh. we see, um, uh, you know, right wing fascist type people sort of uh, finding and usurping large uh, left wing accounts on Twitter, for example, um, that kind of influence, you know, that's, I think somebody was like, let's find a Kennedy. Just like yeah. they were like, let's find a trans person and found Caitlyn Jenner. Let's find a black person and found Herschel Walker. Oh, oh yeah. this has been going on with him for a long, long time. Very true. Yeah, this is, this was, he's in a very specific social circle. He was spewing the vaccine cause autism garbage back in yeah, 2004, OG, 2005. Yeah. He's one of the original uh, you know, yeah, and that might have just been really convinced a lot of people, a lot of very smart people. That might have just been the you know showing that he's just a malleable idiot, he's still an idiot. and then, and then the the right wing machine sees him as a malleable idiot who likes money and is uh, compromisable, like I don't know, like maybe a former president that we know, and then they find him, yeah, uh, and use him. It's it's very. Typical. And I mean, that that's a common recruiting tactic is they go after vulnerable people who are seemingly uh, susceptible to weird conspiracy theories. Uh, and oh, boy, his last name's Kennedy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. They move in. That's the way I see it. I don't have any proof of that other than just past history and the way that, you know, Russia works. Yeah. Well, the, he's he would be a target in the way that you know, lots of these people in the way that someone like Elon Musk would be a target or any know? big brand, yeah. you know, Harvard. Yeah. You know, anything or the Wall Street Journal for that, you know, <laughs> uh, you know to, right. to bring it to bring it around. OK, so Trump sort of got indicted again this week. It was a superseding indictment. We're not sure how to categorize this. It's kind of messing with us. But it it walk us through what is happening now with that. Like the, everybody's saying this is much, much worse. Is it like what's the deal? He didn't sort of get indicted. He really got indicted. Uh, this superseding indictment. I mean, you remember back in the Mueller days where we're like, oh, they're going to supersede Manafort. They're going to these are just yeah, a, yeah. a legitimate like I feel like there should be a support group for superseding indictments like we're real indictments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they just sitting around like we matter. Um <laughs> <laughs> but this is not okay. So the first indictment was about the, you know, the 31 classified documents that he retained illegally, but then also him trying to move them around and cover that up. 
And now, so that was a cover up of that cover up. And now we have like a meta triple cover up. Now we've got, and maybe even a quadruple cover up. But just oh, a quadruple. Oh, I love the quadruple. Double secret let's probation. Let's quad it okay. up. Yeah. Because just in this indictment would be the triple one, right? Where he is actually trying to, he's conspiring with people to delete surveillance video of him, video of him covering up the fact that he stole classified documents. So now that's a triple cover up. Now when we get to the quadruple cover up, we can talk about, because this indictment is just about the attempt to erase the tapes, but they don't talk about whether or not they were successful. And that comes down to, did they flood the server room on purpose or did they, you know, Yes, they and I was did. starting to think I about that. I was starting to think about that server room, and I was like, okay, well, this was all in June, end of June, early July. They flooded the server room in October, but in this recent superseding indictment, they have Jack Smith knows that uh, De Oliveras and Nauda are sneaking around with flashlights through tunnels and going through shrubberies and not even coming on the property and going on. That's all CCTV security footage. So I'm wondering. If Nauda and uh, Della, uh, um, the, the Carlos guy, the pool guy, De Oliveira didn't try to flood the server room to destroy the CCTV of them trying to plot to destroy the CCTV of the boxes moving. Do you see oh, where I'm getting I thought no, it's yeah, like yeah, a no. Mobius I, strip here. This yeah. is, it's, it, it's like a, it's rushing nesting dolls of destroying video. And then you'll have to have another attempt to destroy the server that has the video of me destroying. I mean, the video how many? How long does it till you realize that you're being recorded? <laughs> and maybe it's not the servers. Yeah, maybe it's not in the server. The only way this could be better is if we found out somehow that all of the information was captured and secured on Hillary Clinton's server. Well, he server. was filming them flood the server room, and so then they had to go and destroy that footage. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's really it. clear. I just I just want to back people up in case they missed that is that the guy that's now included in the indictment in the superseding indictment is the guy that was that was the one that flooded the pool that had the pool flood. And he was like, oh, no, it flooded the server room. Oh, catas catastrophe. He's now in the indictment. So the, the very oh, guy right. doing oh, all right. of that. Yeah. But so. here's the thing. And here's what makes this so important. Um, I mean, people like us who are in the weeds and most of our friends and, and most Americans can understand that stealing and hiding classified documents is bad. And then again, even to take it a step further, even more people will understand that moving those around to hide them pursuant to a subpoena is bad. But I think what Americans and most Americans, including independents and moderate voters and people who don't follow the news very much, what they can understand is somebody deleting surveillance footage to cover up their crime. Mm. Uh, and I think that that makes this accessible to a lot more Americans just with the simple, the boss wants these deleted, you know, just with that simple <laughs> phrase, you know, because you got to go bumper sticker sometimes uh, to yeah. get the message. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that that is going to be accessible to a lot more uh, people that maybe you need to talk to your MAGA fam, like members of your family who are MAGA. It's like, yeah, OK, maybe you thought he declassified maybe this. But he went in and tried to tamper, delete surveillance footage of him moving this stuff around. And I mean, that seems pretty, uh, I don't know, pretty straightforward. But it also to the whole rest of the earlier indictment that we saw it really adds to the consciousness of guilt. Nobody goes yeah. around deleting surveillance video that would prove that you were innocent. Um, yes. So I think that this is um, very significant. It really strengthens the indictment, even if it causes a little bit of a delay in in the trial. Uh, I think, I, honestly, I think that the final SEPA six hearings right before like that end like two weeks before the trial starts that's actually probably more of a more ripe for delay than anything else but this does nothing but absolutely intensify this and i and from new reporting from cnn apparently this kid this guy well he's 56 this guy <laughs> uh Oliveris, is like a, he's been working there for 20 years he doesn't really he's not part of the trump inner circle his family's like oh man he wrong place wrong time come on come clean so 
I need, I think somebody needs to lure him away a minute from, you know, this John Irving fellow who's representing him and being paid by Trump's pack and be like, look, you are in a heap, but I don't think you understand what kind of trouble you're in. And, and maybe they can mm. get him to cooperate. Um, Maybe. But, I think if he's been working for Trump a long time and he's seen all the characters around Trump, he might be more afraid of that. He, he, he very may well be. But I mean, I personally, if I pull myself out of a situation and, and kind of relegate the fear and compartmentalize it, 10, 15, 20 years in prison is not worth me not telling the truth. Uh, just personally. Uh, and he might be getting bad legal advice. That's something, I mean, they, they put that loyalty test in there for a reason, right? Remember in August in the, in the indictment, this was in part of the superseding indictment. You know, Carlos wants to know he's okay. And then somebody, employee five, texted to the signal chat group where a PAC representative was who's paying for these lawyers. He's loyal. He's good. Like, like they went and talked to him and shook mm -hmm. him down. And then once that text went through to the signal group, Trump personally called him up and said, I'll get your lawyer for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, LB, you know, this is mm -hmm. mafia. This is mafia shakedown stuff right. from, from top to bottom. And I don't know if he's had, if he's just, if he believes that when the FBI talks to him seriously about how much trouble he's in and how it will be better for him to, I don't know that he believes them. I, I mean, I don't know where his head is at, but I hope somebody uh, gets through to him like somebody got through to Cassidy Hutchinson when Pasatino yeah. was doing her dirty. Well, he, Cassidy Hutchinson is a woman. And so she was forgotten by that crowd in two seconds. They forgot that they had said things in front of her and she would never, never con couldn't conceive that she was, you know, an, a separate entity and an intelligent one. Um, she was running <laughs> the whole fucking country. She was running the whole country, but they're, yeah. but they're never going to see that. So, and they're gonna see, not going to see that because then there, there's a mirror there to, to, for of self regard that is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So women are typically like, you know, oh, my God, you don't think the, you know, the Goomba is going to say anything. And then, boom, she's, you know, in witness protection. But the uh, or what not I said the wrong word I'm here with you. These are Manhattans. We had this. Sushi. You had like one one. Sip. I can't. You make a very strong drink. Oh, my God. Um, but it's in Manhattan. But the, <laughs> what have I done to deserve this flat, flavorless Manhattan? <laughs> But there's a, a, there's also a thing that if it might be happening here um, with these uh, younger than Trump, but not young men, you know, these men who should know better uh, that are doing his bidding and running around and finding themselves in indictments a lot, you know, as co-conspirators. Uh, we don't know how much conversation starts to happen around them from Trump's world of constantly checking in. How you doing? You okay? Boss really loves you. He really likes, he's really proud of you. Well, it's like a and battered you know, spouse sit. Yeah. Yeah. It's constant, not, it's constant. not as easy to leave as you, as it seems exactly. from the outside. Constantly yeah. petting the baby, making sure he's okay. And like, and, and nurturing it because they understand this is a person, no matter how dumb it's a male, right? They, I can see it as an, as an entity, as a person outside of them that might, if they're not staying in line, actually uh, say something to get themselves out of trouble, right? Or and you get this random reward right. pattern right. Um, right. where you absolutely, let's, you know, like gambling. I mean, that's right. what makes slot machines so addictive. Uh, yeah. and why you will lose all your money to them is because every once in a while you'll get a reward and you're like, oh, and it just gives you this huge serotonin yeah. boost. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but uh, if they weren't yeah. sycophants, they wouldn't be there. So they're there because they need a they need a male figure to worship like that. They need a boss. They and want they know that, and the boss, boss knows that. Of course. Wait, is his lawyer really named John Irving? Yes. Like the guy that wrote Garp Cider and Cider House Rules. It's the same guy. No. Um, and for Donald Meany. And oh, what's oh, really oh. what's really interesting is that uh, Tavares, the IT guy who seems to be cooperating here, because you know they have all the conversations where Tavares we. Uh, Carlos goes in and talks to the IT guy and he's like, hey, how long do those tapes last? And uh, the boss wants them deleted. 
And he's like, I can't do that. And even if I wanted to, I don't think I have administrative permission to do that. And even if I wanted to, I'm still not going to do that. Uh, you need to talk to one of the calamaris up at the Trump organization. <laughs> uh, if you want to do that, I'm 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 low man. I'm I'm the head of IT here, but I'm not even that important. And so t- he seems like Tavares is is cooperating, but Tavares and Walt Nauta have the same lawyer, good old Stanley Woodward, uh, who represents pretty much everybody in Trump world right now. Uh, he's being paid for by the Save America PAC, just like John Irving is. So at some point, if if in fact Tavares is is cooperating and Nauda does not cooperate, one of them is going to have to get a new lawyer. There's a conflict of interest there. But yeah. I, I think the DOJ, I talked to Andy about this when we recorded the Jack episode for this Sunday earlier. Andy's like, they might not ask for it right away, a, a resolution for conflict of interest there. They might just let them give them more rope to hang themselves with. Uh, because that tends to happen, as it did with Fonnie Willis and her eight cooperators that were fraudulent electors in Georgia. So we'll see what happens. Now, okay, so you mentioned, Andy, before we, you know, because I think we didn't do this coming in, give everybody a little uh, overview of all the stuff you're working on, because you've got a lot of projects, you've got a lot of like really cool people that you're working with. You know, Pete Strzok's been on this show a couple of times. We love him. Um, so, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of great things. So let everybody know this isn't you leaving because we're going to ask you more questions after, but, but, you know, I want to make sure that everybody knows where we can find you and listen to you. Cause I think it's very valuable, uh, the knowledge that you bring and the people that you bring to deliver the knowledge. Well, most people know me as Muller. She wrote on Twitter, um, with, from the Muller. She wrote podcast. X, Allison. It's uh, called X. Nope. Stop nope. It's the Sears tower and it's Twitter. <laughs> And um, uh, I host. I know exactly what you're talking about too. I know what tweet. I know what blue sky thing you're talking about. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I host. Uh, yeah, but although I, I mean I hadn't been to the Sears Tower in forever. I just went. I was in Chicago for Netroots, and they're like, go on the ledge, and they have these gla- like plexiglass boxes. Yeah, there. no, I'm not like, doing that. Oh, this is different from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's interesting. So. I host the Jack podcast with Andy McCabe, former director uh, of the FBI, acting director and uh, CNN legal analyst. He's very cool. Author of The Threat. If you haven't read The Threat, it's a really good book. Then I host uh, Clean Up on L45 with Pete Strzok, uh, who yeah, is, yep. And you've got Compromised, I assume. Um, I mean, that whole first couple of chapters about ghost stories and the Anna Chapman stuff. I mean, Pete Strzok is the number one Russian spy hunter. Uh, yes, he is left in the united states and he looks like he's nine so it's weird it's like how did you do all this in the 80s when you were like 16 years old um and then uh, i host the daily beans which is the daily news podcast that i do news with swearing with dana goldberg uh, and that's just a recap of all the daily news so that 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 and then i run msw media that's got i don't know like 20 or 30 podcasts on it yeah so you've got lots of free time. You're just hanging around doing nothing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So in all your free time, um, I want to go back to the superseding indictment for When do I sleep? I sleep on my Helix mattress. And you, you should that? check out <laughs> helix.com. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Helix mattress. Um, is there anything that came in that, uh, that should have been a, in that superseding that should have been like a lead story that people weren't catching that was sort of like is there a detail in there that you'd like us to pay attention to yeah i think my favorite part is in the scheme to delete the tapes there's uh the first two paragraphs uh the first one is like june 22nd gung gung june 22nd uh the the doj sends a draft subpoena for surveillance footage to a Trump lawyer. And I thought to myself, why a draft subpoena? Why don't you just wait till you get the subpoena and send the subpoena? And honestly, I think it's because of all this FBI kowtowing. They're all gun shy from the Durham investigation and and the Mueller investigation. And the FBI was trying to not allow a search warrant to be executed. So when they sent this subpoena, they sent a draft subpoena to like a heads up. Like, hey, crime family, here's a heads up for your inspection that we're going to do. So they sent a draft subpoena. And that same day, 
Trump and De La Vera spoke on the phone for 24 minutes. Mm. And two things, well, three things there. First of all, the draft subpoena is weird. Second of all, they have the phone records of either Trump and De La Vera or both. And right. neither of them are cooperating. That's cool. That's cool. And like pulling out the, I retweeted this when you, when you wrote this, uh, re ex I don't know what the, whatever the fuck I did, but, uh, Pulling out t the number 24 for approximately 24 is like pulling out the number 88. Like just say 25. Like there's a specificity to making it 24 that said to me, it's like, oh, they know this was 24 minutes and 13 seconds. And they know that because they have the recording mm -hmm. of it. And you that's know, the you, third you don't thing. Use, you don't use minutes like that unless you've. Well, or, a, you the the else you also or you have the pen register or you right. have, you can tell how long the call was. Right. So they have the phone records of Trump and or uh, De La Vera. Hmm. And that 24 minutes is a long ass phone call. Yeah. Yeah. These days in, in this day and age, you know, it's not back, you know, when we were teenagers and we would be on the phone for four hours uh, running up toll charges on our parents uh, telephones <coughs> from Ma Bell. 24 minutes. Lisa Rubin was on MSNBC. She's like, yeah, I know he was in charge of maintenance and landscaping, but they aren't talking about rhododendrons for 24 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love her. If you're not following Lisa Rubin. She's great. Her. She's great. Yeah. yeah. She's she great. has some really great observations. So that really popped out to me. Those first two paragraphs in the scheme to delete the uh, video footage. Okay. Um, but right, the so, headline, instead of, you know, they add a third defendant, the headline should have been superseding indictments for Trump. There's four and they're big. One of them carries a max 20 year sentence. Oh, I love it. Um, you can tell, by the way, that the the the, um, the litmus test for people that know what superseding indictments are, are people who know how to spell superseding, because I always want to spell it with a C E E like succeed. And yeah. It's not, it's should like, we yes, do a uh, um, remember supersonic? Yeah. Supersonic. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. We should do a superseding. Okay. Um, because I know you guys do the karaoke. Okay. We do. I we think do. that would be a I think that would be a fun parody. Okay. Okay. The S is for super and the U is for unique. <laughs> U is for perfection, because you know that we are freaks. I mean, I hey, think submit the lyrics and we'll just you know, or yeah, hand you know, it over or we, record yeah, it. We do the thing, you know. This record is what we do. it. We'll we'll do it. Um, the E oh, is yeah, for exotic and the R is for rap. So tell those fascist bastards just to stay the hell back. Super oh, she's super. got it. You got it. Just send it. Yeah. Send it over. I, I can't. I would do it. In, we'll whiz bang it. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> in the most, I would do it like in a North Atlantic, you know. Wow, we got to do the whiz bang. We're going to do the supersonic. <laughs> and the hey, Yeah, see? Yeah. That's it. I, well, I like big it. butts and I cannot lie. <laughs> you other brothers can't deny that when a man walks in with an anybody grin with a don't that yeah, like that. Hey, yeah. what are we doing? We're going here. Let's go. <laughs> the new okay, year. now oh uh, I know you have to go. You said you had to leave at nine, our time. Go and, Eagles. And it is almost nine. That's my hot sucker proxy. So I never did I see hot sucker proxy? I don't know. Yeah, you, you would know. You're doing yeah. obscure Cone Brothers movie. Have you seen Burn After well, Reading? Paper Proxy is not obscure. Hmm. It won like nine Oscars. It's a pretty big movie. Did it? I don't know. I saw it a long, 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 long time ago. No, watch it again. I watch it again. Is it good? Mm -hmm. I should watch it again. It's brilliant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Burn After Reading? No. You need to watch that. Oh, please, you, please, please, you please, need to watch please, that please, please, please. I, my wife and I have seen it at least 25 times. We can't stop watching it. Burn after, I'm writing it down. Burn I can't it. even. You'll love it. You'll you'll freak out. Okay. And I know that you don't like to watch new things and that you watch the same stuff, which I also do. Well, this will become the same stuff. It will. Yeah, yeah, this will become it's the really thing good. you I'm watch. On, I'm on Little House on the Prairie right now. So I feel like oh. shit. Just so you know. Okay. That's what I'm watching. Um, I like that Nelly. Mary just went blind. It was sad. Yeah. Oh, I remember, I remember that. that. Yeah, when Mary sad. went blind. It was sad. That was sad. Um. What was I going to say? I don't know. Okay. So we know where to find you. Are you, what's your, what, before you go, you got, you got two more minutes. What do you think is going on with all the social media that you're going to be on Twitter till the, till it, it X's out into oblivion as I will be, I'm sure. 
But you have do you have all the places now? Are you everywhere? Where are I'm you? I'm everywhere. I will stay and fight on Twitter until the very end. But mm -hmm. I do long form stuff on post. You can follow me on post. And I also I'm liking threads. I mean, I know that they're all Nazi bastards, but like, you know, threads is, Fine. is pretty nice. And and I think the thing, I think the reason I like it is because everybody I know is there. I mean, honestly. yeah. Well, that's at the end of the day, you know, it's it's. Uh, are you on Blue Sky yet? I'm there. I'm on Blue Sky. I'm on Spoutable. I'm on Mastodon. All at Muller She Wrote. I'm everywhere. At okay. Mueller, she wrote. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. So everybody, please go follow out. Not, how could you not be following Allison? Because she's the font of all knowledge. But uh, follow Allison. Blue um, on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're I know you're trying. Die, Trump. You're stupid. You're dumb. They're never going to die him. You're dumb. Okay. Yeah. Now they're never going to indict him. Now they're never going to, you know, Mueller didn't do anything. Actually, there was a lot of indictments that he did that Trump invalidated. But, yeah, you know, that he did indict a lot of people. and then went to Listen, I, I don't trust Eileen Cannon. I will not. I would like to see the documents uh, case. I would like to see some charges brought. New uh, Jersey, New man. Jersey. Let New Jersey take him down. Yeah. Give us something. I think all eyes right now are on, on the coup, the, the plot to subvert the peaceful transfer of power. Uh, I think those indictments are probably coming next week. <clears throat> and um, not to say that the that the the, the uh, documents case is, is not important. It is. It's a huge national security threat. But he had always been that way, and he always has been that way. Yeah. Uh, but there is a historic weight to the to the January 6th coup peaceful transfer of power indictments um, that have to happen. And just, you know, temper your idea of what justice is. For me, justice is the, is the indictments. The fact that he's going through the judicial system, whether he's acquitted or whether it's a hung jury or whether he's convicted, kind of is irrelevant to the fact that he's going through the judicial system. Yeah. Um, how the system ends up working we can argue that and change that and amend that all day. But the fact that he's been indicted, that's kind of what we can control by voting for people who will appoint an attorney general like Merrill Garland, who will appoint a special counsel like Jack Smith. Once the indictments happen, it's kind of out of our hands. Yeah. Uh, so just sort of temper your expectations of justice. It's never how you want it to be. It's never the tackle and shackle orange jumpsuit guantanamo gallows it's it's always something in between <laughs> that's good okay last question before you leave real quick uh barbie or oppenheimer um yeah you could go either way. I, can, I can't tell with you i don't know nothing would surprise me here i gotta go with barbie um highest grossing female director in the history of films uh and i i just got a hats off to that and uh um, okay. Uh, I, I, although I have not yet seen Oppenheimer, but I, I feel like there's a big part of the story left out of Oppenheimer mm -hmm. um, with the folks and all the testing in New Mexico. And I mean, we can't obviously make movies about everything all the time. They'd be 800 hours long. I don't know but... how you do Oppenheimer without Feynman. So when I found that out, Ooh, I don't know. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I found out he wasn't in it, but I'll see it. I've seen you it. know me. My dad, worked with, my dad worked with nukes. I know that's why that's why I was particularly interested in this in your answer to the question. I remember I asked you, LV. I'm like, my dad, my uncle told me a story about how my dad came back and said that there was a Titan missile missing on the north shore of Oahu. And my dad was pretty sure that it was aliens. And I'm like, maybe we just sold it to people we weren't supposed to sell it to. <laughs> tomato, like, tomato, you know. But the aliens, they're coming. 1400. Oh, you know, we did have a congressional hearing this week. Oh, geez. Yeah, next time. Next why are why the Senate can't subpoena Harlan Crow and we're having aliens hearings? <laughs> yeah, it would it would it would be nice to uh, if all if the walking and the chewing of gum actually happened but simultaneously. Yeah. I don't, I think I've, I've given up hope on that. Are we not using our subpoena power because half of our senators are too old to vote properly? I don't That's know. a great segue into our next segment. You sure you don't want to stick around? You got to go. You got, you really got to go. I do. I got to go. Well, thank I you know. for transitioning us. Yeah. Thank I you so much. For I know you're tired. So thank you for there. joining us. I did. I, I'm exhausted. I flew home today from New York. I got up at three this morning. Oh, oh and by the way, you came on. 
speaking of that, if I was uh, hosting a, a book talk with Miles Taylor, if you get a chance to read Blowback, even if you hate Republicans, it is a really amazing book. It's very vulnerable. It's very good. And I don't get paid for any of this. I really just love the book. And I, I, okay. I go out and promote it uh, because I believe in it. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Great. I appreciate good. that. All right. Allison Gill, go follow her, everybody. Have a good night. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Allison. Whoops. I cut oh. her I'm bad at this. I'm bad. I what did you do to off. our friend? I don't know. Oh, she's, no. She's laughing now. It's, Oh, no. She didn't leave. She didn't leave. You know, I'm bad at transitions. You know this. You know I'm terrible at this stuff. Um, okay, I have a Floridian friend. Okay, who is excited that it's the Mar-a-Lago workers that are going to take Donald down? It's the people working there. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's the people working there with them. Um, you know, they're not. Their last names aren't. Aren't isn't O'Reilly. Or uh, anybody else that you'll see. Oh, anybody plane. else. We're going to go to the plane. We're going to take the plane. We're going to go on the tramp. We're going to take the ship across the Atlantic and get to England, London. We're going to go there, and then it's going to be the thing. That's what we're going to do. Here, have another drink. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. This is it's better in accent. person. What, the North Atlantic. It's better. Your expressions are better in person. Are better in person? It's okay. so much better. You say so. I am saying it. You know that the, this North Atlantic accent, the way that everyone talks in all these movies, is like completely made up. Right. It's just like nobody's ever talked okay, like that. I hear I hear that. But um my dad, right, who grew up in, you know, does not talk very, like that. I've heard him talk. No, but he did like he worked on it because he he did some voiceover work and World Beneath he was Thomas Dewey. I remember. And he's like, I'm gonna try to get the way my dad spoke, mm -hmm. right? Because there was a, a certain um and his father was a lawyer and a prosecutor and everything. So there was a certain um Fla flavor there uh, mm -hmm. that it's not that. No, it's not that is my it's point. It's not that, but it's not far off from that. But it's something similar. <laughs> you know, there's that movie. What's the movie? Gangs of New York? Yeah. Yeah. That movie is a catastrophe. But Daniel Day-Lewis Daniel Day -Lewis did something so special. Takes, he takes a modern Brooklyn accent or like a 1930s Brooklyn accent it. and a yeah. British accent, finds the midpoint and talks like that for two hours. It's Irish, yeah. Fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. no. Ooh, 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 I, that was something else. Yeah. I, I can't believe you just brought that up. No, I have that's the same... a waste of a good performance. Pisses uh, me off. No. I hate wasting good performances more than anything. That was a good one. More than anything. Okay, yeah, we're way, we're, we're rambling. We got to get to the... We got to get to the after right. hours, right? For our, for our yeah, members. Yeah, we got to... Okay, number... All right, number, so number... wait, hang on. If you're not a, if you're not a, a member, join now. It's a $1.99. And come and we are going to do an AMA. You can ask us anything. It doesn't mean we'll answer. We reserve the right to not answer. <laughs> also, but ask it. And I'm we'll going to do the entire it, show in the North Atlantic accent. Oh, I know. Please don't. No. The facial expression is quite lovely, but no. Okay. Our next topic. Wait a minute. Let me go. That was great having Allison yeah. on. Oh, yeah. Workers rising up everywhere. Oh. Even at Mar-a-Lago. Here we go. More bun, Mitch. This is so, what you wanted to lead with. Yeah, yeah I don't know. You thing. know, I, he had a, like a mini stroke or an episode. They're calling it an episode. I think it was an episode. That's it's what I would episode. call it. This he show had an was event. an episode. He had, he a, had fucking an event. Mini stroke. He was like, it was like if you missed it, Mitch was talking. And and his hands and he froze. He just froze. And as I Wait, described you, do? he froze in mid, and he couldn't move. And I, I, I never like anything seeing anything happen physically to anyone. No, no, ah, no, 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 I don't no. like it. It, 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 it was, but was so strange about it was instead of like, "Are you okay? We need help." We need, the Republicans just moved him out of the way <laughs> like an appliance that broke down, like a vacuum cleaner. Uh oh, the vacuum cleaner broke. It's like, sucking up all of our rice. <laughs> Right, stick it, stick him back in the closet. They, they did. That's what Nazis do. When they're you're done, they just with you, moved they just him out. They just moved you. the That's, broken appliance to the side, and mm -hmm. then and then continued on talking as if this didn't just happen. Yeah, it was so, and, and no one even talks about that. It's like this was not okay. The way that they responded to this man having a med clear medical crisis. Yeah, it's uh, it's bad. So. 
but I can't get over it. I can't get over what they did. Well, they're fucking assholes. They're they're they're, it they're was very horrible revealing. assholes, and they don't care, and they don't fucking care. They, oh they just they're God. horrible people. What I wanted to talk about with Mitch, mm. okay, is his legacy because there's a lot of look. We're gonna have to start writing the obit now so that we can roll it out whenever that. Happens. I'm sure it's written. Yes. yes. Okay. Not by us. So. The obstructionist movement in the United States really began with uh, Newt Gingrich in the early 90s as a response to Clinton. And his thinking was, hey, we're not going to have dinner. We're not going to have lunch with the people across the aisle anymore. We're going to have it us against them. We're going to make it like sports where it's our team versus their team. And anything, if we are in the minority or the majority, anything that the president wants to do we're not going to do it. Even if we think it's the right thing to do, we're not going to do it just because we don't want to give the president a win. So Mitch McConnell took that fucking baton and ran with it. Yeah. He ran with it for, what, 30 years now? And the it's way bad. that our bad, government dude. is set up, okay, it's set up to have two political parties that are equally invested in the result and the outcome of, you know, moving forward with things. It's invested with, and we need that. We need a opposing party we cannot have just the democratic party and nothing else we need no, no. two At functional least. parties yeah. in this country we do not have that what we need in this country is a second party that is functional because of mitch mcconnell principally the republican party ceased to be functional even in the years leading up to the civil war the congressmen the senators came together and compromised on things the compromise of 1840 the missouri compromise there's compromise here compromise there yeah mitch mcconnell was like fuck that we're not doing that anymore we're gonna do nothing so merrick garland gets nominated and mitch mcconnell is like eh, we're just gonna not we're just gonna not do anything we're gonna obstruct well obstruct obstruct that is not how the government is designed and when we have a party that is sabotaging the functions of government the government cannot survive. We've been lucky to survive this long. It cannot last this way. Part of the reason that we have two parties fighting is that we get results that neither side is completely happy with, but we move forward. That's mm -hmm. how the country is supposed to work. But if somebody is, if the president, whoever party, whatever party it is, nominates somebody to whatever post, if that person is qualified for the job, it is incumbent upon the Senate to have the hearing and say, okay, that's their job. If they're not, then say it. But if they are qualified, they're not compromised, they have to let them in even if they don't like them. Because that's their job. To take the Merrick Garland thing and say, we're going to sit on this for nine months or ten months or whatever it is and not do it at all is antithetical to what the founders wanted. And it's awful. Now, Obama bears some part of the blame for this. A lot, a he should have fucking blame. ordered Merrick Garland at the Supreme Court that's and said, it. fuck you. Okay, I'm gonna if you don't do it in 90 days or 60 days... I'm going to assume it's a yes, and I'm going to order him there and put the onus on them to actually do something. He did not. That's a problem. He did. A, he, Obama made a lot of mistakes in the last term. Don't get me started. So, but McConnell is the the prime mover behind this strategy. He is the uh, ne plus ultra, um, you know, mastermind behind it, and that's his legacy. He's going to take it to the grave. Yeah. He helped destroy this country. Destroy it. Everybody, all the judges that are here fucking up people and making women suffer, that's on him. Those purpley, awful, weak hands, blood on the hands. So, you know, people are like, Democrats don't wish any harm. Eh, I don't know. I would I would be fine. You know, this guy is an evil fucking man. He's evil. He's done evil, evil things. And the sooner he is removed from government, the better for everybody in this country, Democrat or Republican. Because the country's not supposed to fucking work this way. We're supposed to at least try to get along and try to compromise. He has stopped doing that. And, you know, I just, I can't stand the guy. And uh, that's it. I have no empathy for him. You know, my human, my Catholic guilt takes over. And I'm like, I feel bad, this old man, blah, 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 blah. But then I remember. Well, I'm not Catholic and I don't have Catholic guilt. But I, it, and it's okay to have a human reaction to watching another human being. No, I don't want him to suffer. I just don't want him to be in the Senate anymore. Okay, so I have a couple things on that. Please do. So, yeah. So, I I just, I, I'm sorry, guys, that these, we are, there there need to be term limits on, on so much. <laughs> it's just, I, I really don't, I, 
once a groove, once someone's in a groove, then it works, right? But then they can't, the country might not function well with the groove that these folks in their careers create for themselves and they don't know how to adapt. Um, I, I just think time is, it's a benefit at a certain point and then there's a place where all of a sudden time becomes a detriment in terms of the length of time someone is in a job because you can't have progress. You know, I don't think of myself as a liberal. I think of myself as a progressive. I'm sorry that that word gets so weaponized, but I'd like progress to keep going. Let's keep going forward. Let's keep progressing into the future. Um, and I just think that becomes impossible. You don't want to turn your back on wisdom and experience and people who understand how to make things work. But at a certain point, their understanding of how things work keeps things from working differently. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a point worth everything where we need things to work a little differently because we've got to try new things. It's the ossification of it. It's the ossification of it. So uh, that applies to him. That applies. This is a nonpartisan thing. Then RBG. specifically, yeah, oh God, yeah, uh, like, whoa, that was bad for us. Specifically to him and this obstruction thing, what he did that Newt didn't do was he taught every Republican that doing nothing and making sure that nothing happens is the easiest way to do your job and he connected it to the money. So when you're in Congress, when you're in Senate, especially in Congress, definitely also in the Senate, though you can maybe work, really work for a little bit of time at your job uh, of what the elected pe the people who elected you presume that your job is and that you're going in there to do. And then the rest of your time is about raising money so that you can stay in that job, mm -hmm. which then works against everything in a, in a matter of time. If you continue in that position, right? The thing we just talked about. So Mitch made it. So it's like, just don't do your job, do everything to not do your job. And I'll make sure you don't have to go out and raise the money because there's money for you. Yeah. I've hustled it all up for you through yeah. my buddies. Yeah. Right. And all you got to do is be loyal to me. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what he did. He taught them all. It wasn't just that Newt started something and he took the baton and run it. He added to that baton by telling everybody else, you don't have to pick anything up. You don't have to do a damn thing. Just... Be an awful person, and that's enough. Yeah. And I've got all this money for you. I'll make sure you're taken care of. <sighs> Just pay tribute. Yeah, that's all. That's, that's all, all you got to do. That's all it's about. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If you see him in a restaurant, give him help. You know, these guys, they he's don't not like gonna, he's in the closet. He's in the appliance repair store and he's not going to any restaurants. Well, you know, these people don't like when there's protests. Leonard Leo doesn't like the protests. In front no, of, they don't like being Amanda confronted State. with America. Doing that, you yeah. know, and mm. uh, that's it. You know, he tried to have people arrested, hmm. violating the First Amendment rights. All right. We're going to ro let's Wait, roll into the announcements. Oh, announcements. announcements. I'm going to pause it because we went to the next thing, but I'm, we're going to take that next time off. Yes. Yeah. OK, the next one's short. OK. Announcements. What's our announcement? We're having an after hours. We will oh, be back. We're after taking hours. two full weeks off. So not next Friday, not the Friday after, but the Friday after that, which I think is the 18th, maybe? I have no 19th, idea. 19th, something. Whatever I that Friday know. is. I have no doubt that back. all of my stuff from California is going to arrive Bye -bye. on that Friday. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm going to be. We'll have, a, we'll have a loop of. I'm going to be You're going to be in the basement with things being moved oh, in. Oh, my like God. Like you were last time. Yeah. It'll be uh, good. Uh, It'll be good. Uh, uh, so hard. Yeah. The other thing is, I am on vacation this coming week, yes. so it is a mortal lock that you will be indicted. It's just, just wait. It's, yeah, yeah. It, something's gonna happen because you're mm -hmm. going on vacation. So That's we true. need you to go. Yeah. yeah I'm going. We're Thank you. I'm gonna take one for the team. I'm gonna take one. Put take my, it, I'm turning my phone off. For the team. I don't want to hear if if he gets indicted again. You can text me. Otherwise, I don't want to hear. It. Right. I don't care. All right. Or I don't know if somebody you know, something really big happens. I don't know what even really big 
If something Elon, really big happens, you'll call in. If, we'll do something. If Elon, you know, changes the X into an actual swastika, which is coming, I think, but uh, it's coming. Yeah, he's going. Yeah, there. 1993 called Elon. They would like their font back. Uh, <laughs> it's so bad. It's the I worst know it's logo, bad on purpose, and people are like, "Oh, this is a genius logo," and isn't it? Who says it's a genius logo? Oh, some somebody he paid to say that. Come on, oh my. God. All right, here we go. Pick it up. The okay. all right. So that. Subscribe. Oh, I know we're hours. like, we're saying subscribe and then we're going goodbye for two weeks. But there's, you know, it will be the after us tonight. I'm going to try to get something together on our, in our shop, guys. It, we've got all these merchandise ideas and I, it's me. It's me. I'm not. And you're here now. And I'm here now. I just, you're this relatively, epic thing. yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. All right. All right. Let's go. Let's wrap this up. Okay. Here we go. Okay. We have 546 left. I want to talk about. Sinead O'Connor. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. So, oh, here's this gorgeous Irish, and I mean gorgeous, not just physically. I just mean, that we, we uh, a husband and I were listening to her songs today. And, oh, my God. What an artist. Yeah. 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 Amazing. So, and will forever be known for ripping up the picture of the Pope live on Saturday Night Live. And it was it, it, the, the, to seize that live moment and do that mm -hmm. level of truth telling. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I had respect for it in the moment. I couldn't believe it. I had respect for it every second after. God bless her for doing yeah. that. And, and, I think only an artist could do something like that. And it was art. It was art <laughs> when she sang. It was art when she pulled up that picture. It was art what she said about the church. It was art when she ripped it. Mm -hmm. It was unreal. I, I You had to maybe be alive for that moment and watch it and witness it as an adult uh, or a young adult. It, I can tell you it vibrated. It just went into my body and went and i will never forget it i will never forget what her art had me experience and then the reaction the global reaction to it what she put mankind humankind put them to the test it was a test of our morality our universal global morality I don't care what demographic you're from. I don't care what language you spoke, what age you were, what gender you were. Didn't matter. You know, if you couldn't connect to that and understand what that was, if the if the reaction was to get the woman, get her. It was, it just revealed. It was like, wow, she just ripped the mask off all of mankind. I never seen anything like it. I don't think we'll ever see anything like it again. And that she didn't, not only didn't lose her faith, there's a wonderful Guardian article that our friend of the show, Rosanna Arquette, and, and my good friend shared with me earlier, not the obituary they wrote, but an article after her memoir came out. Um, I should post it. You guys should all go back and read it. it it's, un, it's just incredible. It's just raw truth coming at you, right? So great. So anyway, I just rest in power. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well said. I have nothing to add other than, you know, she was way ahead of the game on that. Because when she did that, that was still a new story. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't even think Spotlight was, was you know, had done no, anything no, yet. No, yeah. not even close. It was, it was yeah. very, very new. And yeah. she was, you know, attracting attention to something that needed to have attention attracted to it. Because it was really hurting people. Uh, in a major way so it was and the other and, thing is yeah go ahead no i was going to say like the the forces gathering against her compared to her you know the sort of not physically large i mean woman with no you know with shaved head and the yeah. like vulnerable looking you know yeah the, 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 the head, this here i am yeah and subjecting herself to those forces yeah. is really something and uh required yeah. an awful lot of courage so, yeah you know unreal and then one of the things in the article that she says 
um, is, you know, that, that after that, there was this, you blew up your career with that mm -hmm. thinking, calling it a stunt or whatever, which it was not, right? It was the truth. And she's, her response to that is like, I didn't blow up my career. I blew up their careers. Yeah. I blew up the music executives house in Antigua. That's yeah. what I blew up. I blew up the money they would have made off of me. Mm -hmm. That was the greatest thing to happen in my career because it turned me into a live performer. I had to, I had to perform live to make a living and I belong on a stage. I belong in a live performance. That's the kind of artist I am. It helped, it helped me, you know, as an artist to yeah. for, put me in the position that I needed to be in. Um, it didn't blow anything up for me. It, it saved me. It blew up their money and yeah. they're pissed about it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's cool, right. Man. This is cool. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's something very Joan of Arc almost about the whole thing. Like yes. The, like the, I am, you know, this force against. Good. Yeah. Good everything. comparison. Yeah. Yeah. No, it just came to me. Yeah. So. Pretty good. Well, you had to be Catholic for that. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and there's different, you know, Catholicism is a, a vast enterprise and it's, you know, it's been around obviously a very long time yeah. and lots and lots of very important people, sig culturally significant people have been Catholic and, and real in practicing Catholic, believing Catholic. And there's a lot of things. And I think that, you know, going back to Leonard Leo, I know that um, people are protesting in Maine in front of his house and they should be, you know, but the, local paper up there is reporting that it's anti-catholic bias in these protests and i i actually wrote the guy's <laughs> screed saying no it's not accurate it's anti-radical catholic yeah. it's like you know he is he's as steve b put it in the, in the prevail comment you know uh catholic iran you know that's what it is yeah. this guy is not representative of catholicism i think Sinead was more uh in her way you know that 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 spirit of uh warmth and um giving and kindness and charity standing is, up for the most vulnerable yes which is you know when you get down being, to all the being jesus vulnerable stuff, being vulnerable what would standing. jesus do the answer is that that's what he would have done. that's what jesus would do stand that's up right. for the vulnerable so you know and i think that's an interest that's you know whether you're a believer or not that's an interest that's a good way to go about life to say am i here for the vulnerable or not you know as a society, are we here for the vulnerable or not? And in the United States right now, we're not. We're going into a direction yeah. where we're not. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, they are. You know, Democrats are. Ron DeSantis, Greg Abbott, you know, these fascists. Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Say what you will about national socialism. At least it was an ethos. Okay. So <laughs> that's our quote. We're ending on that quote. We're ending on a quote. We're going to take 10 minutes. We're going to be back at 9.35 on the After Hours, which right now you can just, it's on the YouTube page right now. You can see it. You can go to the YouTube page and there it is. Yeah. And we will see you uh, in a very short period of time. I want to say to everybody, thank you so much for watching. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for, I can't believe it's 58 episodes of this. Can you believe it? No. I know. It's crazy. I can't. It's crazy. I can and I can't. And I, I feel like we're in a time loop and we've never not done it. I know. <laughs> It's That's true. Good. So this has been a great show. Thank you guys so much for watching and all the great comments, which, you know, I wish I could like just stop and read them the whole time, but then there'd be no show. So um, anyway, it's all good. I'm going to say it again. Say what you will about national socialism. He's smoking. He's saying, say what you will about national socialism. At least it was an ethos.